like you have some words, nice words to say. John and CJ, I can't tell you how proud we all are of you guys tonight. Y'all have made this evening very special for everybody here. Not to mention that y'all are just too cute for words. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your, your actions, the, the lemonade stand, the cookies, the heart of giving that you guys have for your fellow students, that's amazing. And I'm just, uh, I encourage you to keep that up. I know you will. I'm proud of you both. Y'all have done a wonderful job, and I can't wait to see what's going to happen next year and how you're going to talk what you've done. Congratulations, and thank you for what you've done. sharing information about the new accountability system very briefly and the results for Forest Hall ISD. House Bill 22 passed in May of 2017 launched a new accountability system for schools in Texas. The new system is an attempt to combine both the federal and state system into one. In August, districts received an A to F rating and campuses received either a net standard or an improvement required rating. Next year, in August of 2018, both campuses and districts will receive an A to F rating. TEA released a two-page document to provide information to the public on the new accountability system. The first page outlines the new system, which includes three domains, student achievement, school progress, and closing the gaps. I will explain a little bit about each of those dom domains in more detail in just a few minutes. I've included the full two pages in your board packet for your reading pleasure. The second page outlines the previous accountability system which had four indices. We're on three. There were four, student achievement, student progress, closing performance gaps, gaps and post-secondary readiness. Although the titles are the same or similar, the calculations for the new system are very different, which makes accountability comparisons from previous years very challenging. In the new accountability system, an overall score is calculated by taking 70% of the better of student achievement or school progress domain and 30% for closing the gaps domain. For elementary and middle schools, the student achievement domain is based solely on star performance for all students. For high schools and for districts, this domain is weighted with three scores. Star scores, which is at 40%, College career military readiness levels, which is at 40%, as well as 
those graduation rates, which are 20% of this school. College career military readiness indicators have been modified from the previous accountability system. For example, a previous indicator was participation in advanced placement, or AP exams. In the new system, it's not participation. It's the meeting the criteria of a score of three or higher on those tests. The career ready indicator used to be the coherent sequence of CTE courses. In the new system, it's industry certification. However, we do have a two-year opportunity to earn partial credit, or a half a point, for students who are enrolled in coherent sequence if they are aligned to a subset of aligned coursework identified by the commissioner. For example, automated service excellence certification. domain, school progress, is also calculated with two indicators. Part A is academic growth for the reading and math scores for all star tests. In the past, this was measured by student growth of one year gain or more from a previous grade. In the new system, there can be a half a point or one point based not only on the growth, but the performance based on whether a student passed the previous year or not. So it becomes a little matrix to determine whether we get zero, a half, or one point for each student. Part B is calculated by graphing a district's percent of economically disadvantaged students compared to the overall student achievement score. Then, and I hesitate to say this word, based on a quadratic regression, although that looks linear, lines or curves are drawn to determine the A to F score for those levels. For example, a school with a 100% economically disadvantaged population, and so that would be right here on the graph, would not have to have as many students being the standard in order to earn an A. So as you can see, this little line right here is the A, so they don't have to come up as far. Not as many students have to perform if you've got a high percentage of students in poverty. Also remember that 70% of this is 70% of the score is the better between the achievement domain I've just explained or this domain, school progress. Any confusion? <coughs> Finally, the closing the gaps domain looks at student performances in up to 13 different student groups, which I've listed there, and up to six different components. The components are grade level performance, academic growth, English language proficiency, and student achievement. Again, this was also in the student achievement domain. High schools also have the pleasure of adding in graduation rates and college career military readiness, or CCMR, components in this domain. So, looking at each student group for each component and closing this, the GAPS domain, Elementary and middle school campuses have a total possible of 71 different targets to reach, while high schools and districts only have 54. So, once we go through the calculations of 70% of the better of two pieces and 30% of closing the gaps, the overall score is calculated. It is a raw score that must go through a conversion factor to put it into a more recognizable 0 to 100 point scale which gives us the A to F rating. For this year, 16% of districts, or about 153, were labeled with an A rating. 43%, or 510 districts, received a B. This was also a year where Hurricane Harvey exemption was allowed, which allowed 83 districts to receive an A, or not to be rated. Of the 8,253 campuses rated, 19%, or 1,561, received a score of 90 or higher, which would be net standard. 36% of the campuses, or 2,934, received a score between 80 and 89, which was also net standard. Next year, that would be a B. Okay, I have, this is the Texas Association of School Administrators comparison of the letter grades. And I just want to give you some information compared uh, to economically disadvantaged schools. 
They compared the letter grades assigned based on a benchmark of a school district having 50% of their students identified as economically disadvantaged. So for districts with less, a student population of less than 50% economically disadvantaged, 65% of those districts received an A rating compared to 35% of those who did not have, uh, had more than uh, 50%. For districts with more than 50%, or excuse me, for districts receiving a C rating, that's the third set of graphs, only 11% of the districts had less than 50% economically disadvantaged students compared to 89% receiving a C. So it appears that the greater the percent of economically disadvantaged students, the less likely the campus can receive an A. Or, or excuse me, the district can receive an A or B. All right. So how did Forestville do? The district of Forestville received a B rating overall with a score of 84 and a B score in each domain. Our highest score was 87 in the Closing the Gaps domain. Remembering that although campuses did not receive a letter grade this year, they did receive a numeric score in either a MET standard or improvement requirement. North Elementary met standard on every domain and received an overall score of 84, which is met standard. Their highest score was an 86 in the school progress domain. North Elementary also received one distinction in the top 25% comparative academic growth. Distinctions are awarded for campuses who are in the top quarter or level of performance compared to a group of campuses similar to them in the state. The details for the calculations of the distinctions are in your board packet if you would like more information. South Elementary met the standard on every domain as well and received an overall score of 78, which is met standard. Their highest score was 79 in the school progress domain. South Elementary also received a distinction for academic achievement in science. Floresville Middle School received an overall score of 82, which is met standard. They had a score of 83 in both the student achievement and school progress domains, and Floresville Middle School received four distinction, distinctions for academic achievement in math, academic achievement in science, academic achievement in social studies, as well as post-secondary readiness. Floresville High School had an overall score of 80, which is also met standard. Their highest score was an 82 in the student achievement. For state accountability, campuses received an F rating. Campus receiving an F rating, excuse me, are identified as improvement required or IR. We do not have any of those campuses in this district. For federal accountability, campuses can be identified for various levels of support, with TIPS grant campuses being the most needy, up to campuses for additional targeted support, which means they missed one or more of those targets, remember those 54 for the district high school, in the closing the gaps domain. There are no system safeguards this year. Instead, they have been replaced <coughs> with these targets. Possible of 71 for elementary, middle school, and 54 for high schools and districts. The targets, <coughs> excuse me, of the closing the gaps domain were evaluated, and any elementary campus that falls below 13% of the targets in a specific component, or for high schools and districts, 6%, were identified as additional targeted support. Remember, this is the lowest level of support <coughs> for federal accountability. Floresville South Elementary and Floresville High School were identified as additional targeted support campuses based on the performance of their English language learners. These campuses will conduct a root cause analysis and identify strategies in their campus improvement plans to improve the performance of those students. There are no funding, additional funding available and, or monitoring for this requirement. Although TA could ask for documentation that they have completed the process. Two events have already addressed this need, the creation of dual language program at South Elementary and the training of all teachers at the high school in shelter instruction, which are strategies to best meet the learning needs of our English learners. <clears throat> the state of the district document has also been updated to reflect the accountability ratings as presented. This report is informational only and does not require board action, but I will be happy to ask, answer any questions you might have. Does anyone have any questions for Dr. Wade in addition to what she's presented? Just one more. 
one question by the way. How many of the districts that were affected by Harvey were included? Do you know how many were? 83. 83? Of those 83, did they all accept the A rating, or did they choose not to be there? Are a few, a few that said no rating, but most of them accepted the A rating. Mm -hmm. okay. Interesting. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't qualify. We didn't have qualify, so we couldn't get an exception. But uh, the district south of us, Carnes, they they qualified. Mm -hmm. that's right. So does that kind of skew? Is that maybe? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes, ma'am. Kind of. Yeah. Because there was only, what, 115? 53? Something. Almost 70%. Right. Wow. Um, that I've talked about the support levels, uh, another interesting factor mm -hmm. is half of the campuses, districts in the state have some level of identified support this year, half. So we have two campuses that have support, but it's very minimal. It's just one target that they didn't meet. But half of the campuses have in the state, the entire state, have some kind of identified support, which is <coughs> unbelievable. We expect some revision. We'll <laughs> It's election year. Legislative. Questions? Thank you, Dr. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Item number six is to consider approval of the FIS Board of Trustees Declaration of Respect, Dr. Bates. Yes, so this will uh, be the fifth year, uh, if the board chooses to do so, to uh, move forward with the Declaration of Respect which is really sending a message to our community, to our students, and to our staff and our parents uh, that we are uh, intentionally trying to promote a safe, respectful, and caring uh, environment for our students. Um, by, by having the board, uh, and we'll also have staff members join us in signing the Declaration of Respect, uh, we are uh, pledging to uh, show respect for ourselves, and for others by listening carefully to students who seek our help and working with caring adults throughout the district to make sure that we're meeting their needs. Do we have any questions for Dr. Bates? No. So administration recommends the board approve the FISD Board of Trustees Declaration of Respect. Madam Vice President, now do we accept the administration's recommendation? I'll second that. Mr. Ford and second by Mrs. Smith to accept administration's recommendation on the Declaration of Respect. All those in favor? Or no. Motion carries. Thank you. Item number seven is consider approval of the 2018-2019 campus improvement plans. Ms. Miller. Good evening, board. Uh, tonight, campus principals will uh, do a brief uh, presentation on, on their campus goals and objectives as outlined in each one of their campus improvement plans. So we'll let each principal come forward. We'll start with high school. Okay. It was last year at this time. Um, <laughs> last year at this time, <laughs> got a yellow card or the year before, so I've, I've scripted what I need to say. <laughs> It's under two minutes. Um, so, um, kind of our, we, we do a campus improvement plan um, by comprehensive needs assessment. And in developing our uh, improvement plan, we did this through the following, which is professional learning communities, which are PLCs where teachers meet, department meetings, teacher feedback, and through the use of surveys. We also looked at a lot of different contexts in making decisions, such as demographics of our school, a lot of data, and even our last year's campus improvement plan as a target to gauge where we wanted to go. Um, and a lot of our goals this year also kind of really align with the district improvement plan as well. However, I added two more on top of that, but I think it's reasonable because one is an additional target of support we need for our English language learners. Uh, so we came up with five goals this year for the high school. Our first one, same as the district goal, you'll probably see this is uh, 
consistency throughout the campus principles. Our first goal is to ensure annual academic and personal growth for each student. We plan to show mastery through these six objectives, ranging from increasing scores and in student performance on state assessment scores, increasing ACT, SAT scores, and offering more support for our English language learners in hopes of meeting the state target in English language arts, kind of like what Dr. Wade was saying on one of them we missed. Second goal, ensure annual academic and personal growth for each student. Uh, mastery will hopefully be evidenced by utilizing the restorative discipline approach to have a decrease in incidents resulting in in-school suspension, suspension, and or alternative school placement for our students. Also, we have been and we will continue to increase staff awareness regarding safety uh, measures on our campus and reduce the operation plans. We had Stop the Bleed training today. And, and so forth. Uh, we are hoping to increase parental involve, involvement as well, and also really finding ways to increase ways for teachers to be innovative with the use of technology to enhance student learning in the classroom. Uh, so that's kind of Goal three, attract, develop, and retain highly qualified uh, teachers. Uh, we hope to do this through professional development that is geared towards their interests, but will also help impact student learning and student mastery. Um, we have a district-wide, but we implemented the campus too, a mentor-mentee uh, partnership where our teachers are helping our new teachers kind of grow. Um, and I think it's important that our staff be involved uh, and have a voice in the hiring process on our campus. Goal four is, I'm big in this, it's about, I'm sorry that's small there, but we really want to participate maximize our participation with the student body in extracurricular activities, not just sports, but clubs, activity organizations. Well, what are some examples we're doing this year? Uh, we have a board game club. Uh, we have a hope club. I visited with Dr. Wade and Mr. Galloway. We're looking at an avid club. So we're really branching out and trying to get more kids involved. Uh, we plan to meet this goal, like I said, by offering more clubs and activities. Uh, we're going to promote UIO academics by actively recruiting teachers and students and continue to increase the number of students on my principal student advisory committee from the last couple of years I've been on campus. And I started that when they were freshmen, now they're seniors, so I'm hoping to get them more involved and have them have a bigger voice. And my last goal, um, overall student attendance, we're hovering as a campus around 96%, and that's been quartile two, quartile three, when we're comparable to 40 other school districts in relation to kind of what we have to offer um, and so forth. And we want to get in that quartile one, because that's one way you can get that uh, jewel for your crown, that designation distinction. I know like Ms. Gonzalez got four of them. Mm -hmm. Congrats. But we want to get there. That is, that is one way you can do that is really promoting student attendance. Um, how do we do that? We will do this by monitoring weekly attendance and share that with students and post it and make it visible on campus. Uh, we will make home visits periodically and report chronic attendance uh, of our students to our truancy officer. Uh, and we will schedule meetings with the students and parents who have their child chronically absent. And lastly, we'll offer Saturday school to our students twice a month, and then we have extended library hours where they can, Monday through Thursday from 3.30 to 7.30, where they can capture credit for those hours missed. And so that's our five goals of the high school for this year. Any questions? All right. Yeah, a little bit past, but I tried. <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all. For the middle school, our comprehensive needs assessment was not any different than what high school did. Uh, we did meet once a month to review where we were at at the middle school, and we used all kinds of information. We reviewed student demographics, attendance, and discipline, and of course, we reviewed any kind of uh, testing data that we needed, and we made uh, changes either for that year or for the incoming year, we made some changes. Our goals are the same as the district. All the goals and the objectives are the same for goal one. I'm going to read those to you all. And for goal two, the only thing that is different in goal, uh, goal two was that I added a goal of an objective four, and that is transitioning our uh, students from elementary to middle school, and how we transition them from middle school to high school, because we're the middle child. So we gotta figure a way how to work with our kids coming in and then prepare them for high school. 
and also, of course, uh, increasing parent involvement. That is the objective that I added uh, to uh, goal two. But uh, goal three remains the same, the same as the district as well as the objectives. And that's it for me. Oh, by the way, uh, we're doing a good job, Mike, because we won the attendance flag for the weekend in the room. <laughs> <laughs>
So all of our objectives align with the district. So we have the same three goals as the district goals. How we support those goals um, are slightly different. So with goal one, as far as academic and personal growth, um, the accountability system stays